Thank you all for spending the day with us to help celebrate the 40th anniversary of Arden Embassies. I'm sure you've not forgotten what I told you this morning, that the program would not be possible without everyone in this room participating. We are very, very grateful to such a generous art community. I think the uh, conference today went very well. I want to thank Elizabeth Ash. I want to thank Virginia Shore and the curatorial team and Becky Clark for installing the wonderful sculpture exhibition that's in the South Courtyard and also upstairs in these fabulous rooms. This contemporary art is quite wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. We won't be doing this every year, but we're glad that we could celebrate our 40th together. I want to thank Secretary and Mrs. Powell for so generously hosting this beautiful reception. This, this is a very special place in Washington. Uh, not everyone gets to come here, so we're extremely grateful for their generosity. The Art and Embassies program is part of the Overseas Building Operations. My boss is named General Two. <laughs> it's uh, General Charles Williams, and I would like for him to come forward uh, and introduce our speaker. Thank you. Well, I have the best job this afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. As director of the Overseas Buildings Operation of the State Department, I have the privilege of managing, the great privilege of managing the $12 billion portfolio of the department's property overseas. We buy, we sell. All property, we lease, we design, we build, we maintain thousands of buildings, in fact, 15,000 properties, U.S. government wide. My responsibility gives me the opportunity to work with some talented, very talented architects, designers, builders, and artists as you are. So delighted to see you today. Oversight of one of the areas of responsibility that gives me particular pleasure is the wonderful Arts and Embassy program. Originally conceived as a program to make our embassies look more American and beautiful, the program over the last 40 years has evolved into one of the most effective diplomatic tools for the State Department. You as lenders make that diplomatic effort possible. Because of your generosity, foreign audiences each day have the opportunity to experience some of the best aspects of American culture which is communicated to them through your work, Savart. We thank you for helping us in our effort to make friends for the U.S. government, and we look forward to your continued support. Ann Johnson, who just spoke, our director of the program has been very innovative, and I don't say this lightly, in her approach, and has brought forth the Artists of the Month program, for visibility and recognition. She has energized the effort with the expansion of our Artists Abroad program, bringing the artists to local communities in 10 countries this year alone. This is the first year we launched this. So I can't say enough about our director, who you've met and you work with. Now, what I was supposed to be doing it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you someone <laughs> who has given our organization and me all of the support that could be asked for to allow us to start the building of 28 new embassies around the world since 2001. Before that, we did one embassy every two years around the world and one who strongly believes in the Arts and Embassy program. My good friend, my boss, <laughs> our Secretary of State, Colin Powell. Thank you very much, General. 
You make a guy a general, he starts to take over, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's a great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening, the artists and lenders to the Art in Embassies program. And I would like to begin by saying how uh, fortunate I believe I am to have General Williams and his lovely wife, because they come as a team, Marjorie, uh, as the head of our overseas building operation. It happened this way. When I became uh, Secretary of State, or was designated to be Secretary of State in the fall of uh, 2000, uh, just before inauguration in 2001, but that December, January winter period, I was looking around uh, and discovered that one of my responsibilities was to run a building program that spent about a billion dollars a year, and it, nobody was really in charge of it. So my old friend, uh, General Williams, Corps of Engineers, brilliant officer, distinguished leader, and a man who knows something about building stuff. I called him and said, come on in here. At that time, he still remembered that I was a four-star, and he wasn't. <laughs> so he showed up, and I said, you got three weeks to go tell me about this program. And he went out, and he did a three-week study. He came back in and said, you got one heck of a problem. Everything is uh, over cost, overrun, over everything. And um, I don't know what you're going to do about it. <laughs> I said, I do. <laughs> and for the last uh, three plus years, Chuck has been by my side working for me and Rich Armitage, my deputy, and Grant Green, the under secretary, and has done a brilliant job uh, saving the taxpayers money, bringing the cost of our embassies down, and getting them finished on time and under cost, and I'm so pleased to have him with the department. I also want to express my deep thanks to Ann for all the terrific work that she does in this program. Isn't she a real star for this program? <laughs> we welcome you to this wonderful room that you'll hear something about in the course of the evening, and Alma and I are so honored and privileged to honor Art in Embassies on its 40th anniversary. This wonderful program was founded, as you know, in 1964, making it one year older than both the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. And for 40 years, Art in Embassies has helped to tell America's story to the world, and it has told our story in the most vivid and compelling language that is available to us the beautiful, wonderful language of American art. For 40 years, the art exhibited in our diplomatic posts around the world has helped people across the globe to understand America's rich cultural diversity and to appreciate our deep belief in freedom of expression. For 40 years, Art and Embassies has exemplified the idea that art and diplomacy go hand in hand. Indeed, since our nation's earliest days, art and diplomacy have complemented one another. It is especially fitting that we are celebrating tonight here in my favorite room in the department, the Benjamin Franklin State Dining Room. Not only is this one of the most beautiful rooms in all of Washington, this magnificent room bears the name of a man who embodied the art of diplomacy and the diplomacy of art. Franklin was one of our first foreign envoys. His brilliant diplomacy convinced the French to throw their weight behind 13 scrappy colonies in our fight for independence. Europeans really loved Ben Franklin. They were charmed and fascinated by this gentleman. They saw him both as a philosopher and as a New World savage, noble yet common, attractive and coarse, all at the same time. Franklin represented the hope and the promise of America. He was a man from ordinary beginnings who realized his extraordinary potential in freedom. And it was literally the image of Benjamin Franklin that inspired people in France and across Europe to champion Americans' cause. Artists fought each other tooth and nail for the chance to render Franklin's likeness. Old Ben sat for so many artists that it's surprising he ever found time to get around to diplomacy. <laughs> His humble face was carved into marble painted in oils, etched into metal, sketched onto paper, and fashioned into ladies' jewelry even. Franklin must have been delighted, absolutely delighted, in the sight of his image resting 
on the finest décolletages in Europe. <laughs> I can handle that. <laughs> People everywhere could sense old Ben's spirit, and through him they joined with the American colonists in a shared optimism, dreaming of a world that was freer and more democratic than the world they knew in old Europe. Communicating America's principles to nations all over the world mattered in Franklin's time, and it matters so much more today. Because in our globalizing world, nations large and small, developed and developing, cannot begin to tackle 21st century challenges by themselves. They can't do it alone. We must reach out to them. We must reach out to one another, understand one another, and find ways to work in concert with one another. Whether it's fighting the war on terrorism or stemming the HIV-AIDS epidemic, lifting people out of poverty, or building healthy democracies, we must join hands, we must join forces. And none of these challenges can be done by government alone. The private sector and the actions of individual citizens are crucial to our efforts. That's why public-private partnerships are an important component of so many of President Bush's foreign policy initiatives. America needs public-private partnerships that develop bonds between our citizens and the people of the world. And so after 40 years, America needs art in embassies more than ever. America needs cultural ambassadors whose voices reach beyond the apparatus of government. And all of you, all of you here tonight, are answering our call, answering America's call. You are launching the American Artists Abroad Program, an initiative that will enable us to send America's art and artists directly into local communities overseas. This is the kind of diplomacy that America needs in the 21st century, people-to-people -people direct diplomacy. Our world may be changing, but the democratic principles America embodies are eternal, and art's ability to express those principles is unfailing. Like nothing else, America's art expresses the creative spirit of our citizens and the power of our democratic ideals. Now more than ever, art and diplomacy must work together. We in government look to you to continue telling America's story in the language of art. Tell that story to the people of the world. Like America, art in embassies values and gives expression to diversity. Like America, art in embassies believes that liberty is a universal yearning. And like America, art in embassies believes that human creativity is a powerful source of hope for all mankind. Ben Franklin knew all of this in 1776. The founders of the Art in Embassies program knew it in 1964. And those of you who continue to make art and embassies a success know it today. The Art and Embassies program is stronger than ever, a grateful nation and a very, very grateful secretary thanks all of you for the work that you do. President and Mrs. Bush extend their thanks to you. And on behalf of the men and women of the State Department who have the privilege in serving in the presence of your wonderful gifts to our wonderful nation, Alma and I thank you from the bottom of our heart. I would now like to take this opportunity to dedicate a new book, The Art in Embassies Program. I want to thank Mr. Andrew Solomon, who wrote the book's insightful and informative central essay. This book and Mr. Solomon's contribution to it chronicle how tremendously successful Art in Embassies has been in helping our diplomats make lasting friends for the American people. And now I would like to invite Ann Johnson and Andrew Solomon to the podium for the presentation. The book. <laughs> Andrew, would you like to say a word? Oh, that's very kind. Go ahead. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't prepared to say a word, but I just wanted to say that I first came to be involved in the Art and Embassies program when a friend of mine was working for it um, some 17 years ago, and the accomplishments of the program have perpetually 
thrilled and excited me. I think the presence of America's high artistic tradition in the countries with which we have diplomatic relations eases those relationships and conveys the passionate freedom of America in a way that would not be possible without it. Um, I pay tribute to Ann Johnson and to Secretary Powell, to all of the others who are responsible for um, the extraordinary achievements of this program. Thank you. I have to say two more names from Martin Embassies, Marcia Mayo and Sally Mansfield. Thank you very much for all your editorial. Thanks. And our, our government printers are actually here from Vienna, Austria, to, to celebrate with us tonight. We have a book for each of you on the way out. Please enjoy and uh, continue painting and sculpting and, and making beautiful quilts. Thank you so much. <laughs>